I drove this $2 million sim rig. This is a dream opportunity for any sim racing enthusiast, so I thought I'd share my honest thoughts and opinions from a pro eSport driver's perspective. Was it fun? Is it worth the money? Does it make you faster? I'll tell you all about it in this video. And if you do enjoy my insights, hit that sub button because then maybe I'll get more opportunities to share with you guys in the future. So how did this happen? My eSport team Veloce were approached by Wired as they needed a eSport driver in their latest YouTube video. So then Veloce called me up and this is basically what happened. Yo Yukog, do you want to drive a $2 million sim rig? Yes. Now the main focus of Wired's video was to compare three different price sim rigs and I think it was met with a, a bit of mixed reviews in the comments, but we're just gonna hyper dial in on the bits where I'm in testing the, you know, the really expensive rig. So I traveled across the country to Bristol where Dynisma is based and after a few hours of filming and watching the presenter drive a few laps, it was then my turn to hop into the simulator. The thing is, Dynisma is so pro that I don't think I can test it all on my own. We need a pro racing sim driver, <laughs> and that is George. George is not only a pro racing sim driver, he's also a pro driver in the real world. Whoa. Now, for some reason, they say I'm a pro driver in the real world here. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell them to say this. <laughs> but I guess in my defense, I have won Your a British national karting, karting championship. So Boothby. I'll let you guys decide. Maybe I'll make a video covering that. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see it. This is mega. <laughs> <laughs> this feels amazing. Oh, it's feeling really good. Like you say, you can feel everything on the rear of the car. Every time I go over a curb, it feels so realistic. So the way the Dynisma motion system works, because it's so advanced, basically you can feel the rear kicking out of the car. And that's like one of their big claims, I guess. And yeah, you can. It's, it's really cool. I, I feel like it's not perfect, but it's a sensation there, and it, it just helps you on the throttle. Instead of just visually watching the car suddenly spin, you, you can feel the car spinning, so it lets you be a bit more accurate on the throttle. In, in a weird way, it was training my brain that this is real. The more I'm going around now, the more it, visually and mentally my brain's accepting it, and this is quite easily the closest I've ever driven to anything. Oh god, it's just fantastic. Now I was playing up to the cameras a little bit, but it was all exactly how I felt, and you know, nothing I said was a lie. Uh, just what I didn't say to the cameras was, at this point, I was feeling extremely travel sick. Because at first, my brain just wasn't quite adapting to the motion, and it just made me really sick. <laughs> so I was trying to put on a brave face, because after like, lap four or five, I was like, really feeling it in my tummy. <laughs> I'm so used to static sims, and I've never experienced a sim like this before with the motion. They've just changed the settings for George, giving him less grip on the tyres, because annoyingly he's doing much better than I was. So they've got different realism settings, depending on who's on the sim, and after a few laps they gave me the most realistic settings. However, there was one setting they weren't allowed to turn off, and that was a safety feature. And you won't see it from these clips, because it's been edited really well, but basically, Every time you go over a big curb, it was a 50-50 chance as to whether the full motion platform just turns off and has to be reset. And it takes like 30 seconds to reset it all. Uh, so it was a little bit annoying. And when I say shut down, I mean all motion, everything, even the force feedback of the wheel, everything turns off. So although I was having the absolute time of my life driving this thing, it was annoying that almost every lap I had to wait for the whole system to be reset. And eventually, I just started driving around the curbs because, like, it was, it was just getting a bit silly. And something that was cut from here is they compared our lap data as well, and I was about a second off what the best driver's ever done around here, mostly due to me, obviously, avoiding the curbs and also the brake pedal. I just wasn't used to the brakes. Apparently, I could press it a lot harder, so it'd be cool to jump back on there and see if I could ever beat that time, but I guess, who knows, maybe, maybe the opportunity will happen again. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> There we go, thank you. Are there any parts of driving around the track that particularly stood out for you? I think I definitely struggled a little bit at first with like the tighter corners because that sense of speed is there, unlike at home. And you go from hundreds of miles an hour down to like really slow speeds in a, in a second on the brakes. So I definitely struggled with those tight hairpins, but then 
after a few laps, just the feeling, everything about this sim just made it feel a lot more natural and I was able to get to grips with it. A little bit of this conversation was cut, but I was basically talking about how I'm so used to a GT3 sim and then to go to an F1 car is like, what the heck? Suddenly, like, I'm stopping in a second on the brakes and it, it's just wild. But uh, obviously, after I got used to that, it, uh, it felt natural. How much do you reckon it would improve your driving? I think it would help so much just in terms of learning the track, learning the characteristics of a car, then even setting up the car. You know, you can trial it in the sim and then apply it to the real world. And I think that's where the market is and that's what's going to be a game changer. <laughs> I said the phrase game changer. I mean, I'm not wrong there, but I think a little bit of that conversation again was cut. I was describing how it would be for a real life you know, F1 driver, for example, uh, what he would gain from the sim, but they made it seem as if it was what I would personally gain from the sim for my real life driving, if you know what I mean. But I don't do any real life driving, so <laughs> it did seem a little bit weird that, but. And just like that, it was over. And that was my experience on one of the most expensive simulators in the whole world. So what are my thoughts on the whole thing? The software they used was RF2. I think that was really, really, really good. Uh, also, just the uh, hardware we had, so the you know the wheel, the pedals, it all felt really, really nice. They used projectors for the screens, and even though it was pitch black, it just didn't quite feel right. But after driving a few laps, you just sort of get used to it, I guess. And the motion system they use is just bonkers. If you want to know more, I guess, in detail on that, go onto their website at Dynisma. I know there'll be one or two people watching this video that will think because it's not fully 360, when the motion has to sort of reset itself after a corner, do you feel that? And the answer is no. I didn't feel anything like that. But there were a few negatives from the experience, if I'm honest. They do have some other sims as well that go as high as $10 million, and those ones have a full 360 screen, so it would have been nice to maybe try that out. And also, maybe just like a different track. I feel like Monaco just was not good to test out what this thing's capable of, if I'm honest. Like, imagine, like, a fast track, like Spa, for example. I think that would be way better. And then, of course, those sim safety features. They were so annoying. <laughs> so, in conclusion, was it fun? Yes. Yes, it was. Is it worth the money? Now, to an F1 team who has unlimited budgets, yeah, probably. However, for me... A good joke. <laughs> and if I had a warehouse down the road with that sim in, would it make me faster? Again, uh, probably not. <laughs> Although having all the extra sensors in the cockpit, I don't think it would really add to my lap time. Maybe some of it would help and I'd have a better initial feel with a car, but once you get to grips with it and you're extracting the most, uh, you just there's not really much more you can do. Some people out there can get world records with a Logitech G9 strapped to their desk. So, you know, all this extra stuff you can get, while it may add to the immersion, it may make you a little bit more consistent. In terms of actual lap time, it really doesn't do that much. I ain't going to be setting any new ACC world records on that rig. But let's be real here, that ain't what it's really made for. This is made for people or teams with unlimited money that want to get as much track time as possible before the next big event. And to give the driver just the most immersive feeling they could possibly get without actually driving a real car. And I can definitely see the value in that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I've been hitting YouTube pretty hard this past month, and the response has been insane. So if you like anything sim racing, make sure to check out my channel and check out some of my other videos. Big shout out again to Veloce, Wired, and Dynismo for making this video possible, and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye-bye.